Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back. In this session, we will be looking at regression, which is a type of curve fitting technique. In regression, uh, we, have be, we are given a set of data points and our objective is to fit a model. Right? The model coefficients are not known. So, we are expected to determine the coefficients of the model such that the model best represents the data points. The outline of today's session is going to be, first we will look into what is regression and then we will talk about the types of regression analysis. And then we will discuss about how do we quantify error in regression because that is what is going to be our objective, right. We, we need to have a measure uh, as to how good our model is, right. So that is why we will be looking into quantification of error for regression. Then we will be discussing in this session only about simple linear regression. Uh, the other types of regression, multi, multiple linear regression and polynomial regression uh, we will be looking in the uh, next session. After that, we in order to quantify how good our model is, we will be looking into something that is popularly known as R square, which is, act, which is the coefficient of determination. Right? So, that is going to be the outline of today's session. In regression, we are given the data and we are required to fit a model. So, the form of the model is known. So, for example, here if we see x and y data are given, that is plotted over here and here we are, uh, we are required to fit a straight line, right. So, for example, let us assume that we are required to fit this line uh, f of x is equal to a naught x plus a 1, right. So, as you can see uh, it is, uh, it is a linear equation, right. Uh, so, in this points if we can see uh, there are many lines which we can fit, right. So, there are infinite combinations of lines uh, which, ca which can be uh, drawn to these points, right. So, our task is to find out the line, uh, our task is to find the coefficients of the model such that the error between model values and the given data is minimum. So, let us say we come up with a particular uh, uh, value of a naught and a 1, right. So, once we have a particular value of a naught and a 1, for all these uh, x values, we can actually uh, calculate y, uh, let us say that is y model, right. So, the difference between this y and y model has to be uh, minimum. So, that is what uh, we will be doing in regression. So, the task is to come up with this a naught and a 1 such that Mm, it best fits the data, right. So, for a given point x k, uh, the value from the model can be determined using this expression. So, for a given point x k, uh, the value of y can be determined uh, over from this, right. So, that, that would be y, uh, that is f of x k and y k is what is actually measured. So, y k is what is given. So, the difference between f of x k and y k is the error. So, the difference between what our model would predict the value to be and the value which has been observed. So, the difference between those two is the error, right, okay. So, here uh, as you know x is the uh, independent variable, y is the dependent variable. So, as we change x, we have a system which uh, provides us the y value. So, x is the independent variable and y is the dependent variable. So, this error is also known as uh, deviation or residuals and the average error can be calculated by, this is the um, error associated with one data point. So, the data associated with, the error associated with n points is the summation of all the individual errors and if we divide that by the total number of points, so in this case n would be uh, 6 because there are 6 data points, right. So, that will give us average error. We can also calculate uh, maximum error, we can also calculate root mean square error. The different types of regression are simple in which we 
uh, in which there is one independent variable and one dependent variable. So, in all these cases we will have only one dependent variable and we can have more than one independent variable. When we have only one independent variable, so for example here y is the dependent variable and x is the independent variable, right. So, this is a, this is what we will call it a simple regression, right. So, the task here is to find out the values of a0 and a1 so that it best fits the data. Now, when we say it best fits the data, uh, we will have to define uh, what is best, right. So, that we will do in subsequent slide, uh, in subsequent discussion. In multilinear regression, uh, we have two or more independent variables. Remember, the dependent variable is still y. So, for example, here if we see y is equal to a0 plus a1 x1 plus a2 x2. Remember, x1 and x2 are not the data for variable x, right. So, there are two variables. So, the data is going to be something similar to x1, x2 and then y. So, for a particular value of x1, for a particular value of x2, we are going to have y, right. So, because we have, uh, so for example, x11, x12 and So, we can have x1 the first data point, x2 the variable the first data point and y1. Similarly, the variable x1 the second data point, the variable x2 the second data point and y2. Variable x1 the third data point, variable x2 the third data point and the y value. So, this is how our data is going, going to be. Uh, so, the task is to fit this model, right, uh, to, uh, uh, to fit this model. So, that is to determine the values of A0, A1 and A2. So, X1 and X2 are known, right, our task is to find out these three coefficients. So, this is if we have two, two independent variables. So, the independent variables are X1 and X2. Similarly, we can have M independent variables. So, when we have M independent variable, this is the constant coefficient A0, A1, X1, A2, X2 and all the way up to AM, XM. Right. So, remember this y is nothing but the value predicted by the model, right. There is going to be, uh, there might be some error between the value predicted by the model and the value which we have observed, right. So, uh, we need to come up with these coefficient such that the difference is uh, minimum. So, that is our multiple uh, regression. In polynomial regression, we have a polynomial uh, that is to be fit. So, for example, if we have a second order, if we want to fit a second order polynomial, then we have this data uh, x versus y, right. So, x1, x2, x3, these data points are known, x1, y1, x2, y2 and x3, y3 and so on up to xn, yn. So, the task is to come up with uh, the, be the best values of a0, a1, a2 such that the difference between the value predicted by the model and the actual value which was observed is minimum for all, all the points, right. So, for if you want to fit an mth order polynomial, this is what the model would look like. a0 plus a1 x1 plus a2 x square plus a3 x cube all the way up to a power m uh, all the way up to a m x m. Here if we see all these three cases, simple, uh, simple regression, multiple regression and polynomial regression, the coefficients of a0, uh, the power of a0, a1, a2, and uh, all the way up to a m, whatever the coefficients which are unknown. So, in this case, these are the coefficients which are unknown, right. So, their power was 1. So, that is why this is uh, linear regression, right. So, for example, here we have x square. So, that does not make it non-linear regression because the data points x are known. What is not known are the model coefficients. So, sometimes we are required to fit uh, non-linear models. So, for example, assume this is a data, uh, assume this data set, right, x versus y, right. In this case, uh, we want to fit a uh, model similar to this. So, this model is now, if you see, it is a non-linear model. So, some other, some other few examples of non-linear model is y is equal to a e power b x. Because of b, this model is non-linear, right. So, over here also, if you see, b occurs in this denominator. So, it is a non-linear again because of this uh, minus 2 it becomes non-linear. Again over here a1 uh, is not known and we need to find out. So, this is a non-linear model, right. So, this is also a non-linear model. So, all these three, all these first four models have only one dependent variable, right. So, x versus y is known, x1, y1, x2, y2 all the way up to xn, yn all the data points are known. 
the task is to find out the coefficients uh, a to b in this first three models. In the fourth model, we are interested to find a0 and a1, a, a1 right? And in this mod, uh, for this particular model, we have two independent variables. Just like in linear regression, we had multiple uh, independent variables. Here also, we can have that uh, multiple independent variables. So x1 is a variable, x2 is a variable, and y is the dependent variable. So these two are independent variables. Y is a dependent variable. So we have these points x11, x21, y1, x12, x22, y2, all the way up to n points. We have n points. So the task is to come up with uh, the coefficients a0, a1, and a2. Right. So this is nonlinear regression. So first we will look into linear regression right? and then we will move on to nonlinear regression. So nonlinear regression can be solved in two ways. In certain cases we can transform the model into a linear model. In certain cases the model is not transformable. So in that case we will have to handle it as nonlinear uh, model itself. So we will disc so we'll discuss that uh, as we come to nonlinear regression. So consider this data set x and y, right? So this data set is available. The values of x are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and the measured values of y are 0 0.5, 2.5, 2, 4, 3.5, 6, and 5.5. Let us say, uh, so over here, if we see, there are multiple ways to fit this. Uh, there are multiple models you can fit. Multiple models in the sense, uh, multiple straight lines we can draw, right? So here the task is to fit a straight line. Uh, let's say y is equal to a naught plus a1 x right so here if we see dip ch by changing a0 and a1 we can draw as many lines as we want right but not all of those lines are uh, will best reflect the data points right so the uh, question is what is the best value of a0 and a1 right so before finding before going into how to find the best values of a0 and a1 let us understand uh, how are we going to define uh, the measure right when we say best we also need to define uh, best with respect, best in what sense, right? You want the error to be minimum or you want to be, you want the square of the error to be minimum, right? So that is what we will first look into it, right? So let us assume that some way we are able to come up with this model, uh, this uh, a naught and a1. Remember the task was to find out a naught and a1. Right now I am saying, let us say there was some way with which we found this a naught to be 0 0.07 and this a1 to be 0 0.84, right? So now since I have this uh, model coefficients, right? So, with this model coefficients, we can find out the values of uh, y, right? So, for example, for 0 0.91, uh, what would have been done is y1 is equal to, so y1 from model. One, this y1 is what we have measured, right? So, but we are now trying to, uh, cal now we are trying to calculate what is the value of y predicted by the model if the model coefficients are 0 0.07 and 0 0.84, right? So in this case, we will calculate y1 is equal to 0 0.07 plus a1 is 0 0.84 into 1 because that is the x value, right? So we will get this 0 0.91. Similarly, for uh, y4, this 4 is observed value that is already given. So to, to get this 3.43, we'll have to plug the value of 4 in this expression, uh, in this equation y is equal to a0 plus a1x, right? So a0 is 0 0.07, a1 is 0.84. So we'll have to calculate uh, with, with xs4, we'll have to calculate the y value. So that would be 3.43. So now we have the measured values and now we also have the values predicted by the model. So for each of this point, we can calculate what is the error. Right. So for each of this point, what we uh, we can calculate what is the error. So the error is shown over here. So for the first point, the model is providing this value, right? And the one uh, the data point is this. So the error is minus 0 0.41, right? So the error over here is minus 0 0.41, right? Similarly for 0.4, the actual data point is this, and what is predicted by model is over here, right? For x is equal to 4. Uh, whatever that is predicted by the model. So we can calculate the individual error, right? So now individual error, which is nothing but y measured minus y model and the model value itself is nothing but substituting the data value, right? So this E should not be here. Over here, 
the model value is what is given by the model and not the error. So, the error is not known, right. So, when we are talking about measured, it is y model plus error. So, for example, if I want to write, write the relation between y measured and y model, it is y i what is measured minus y i what is uh, what we get by model, right. So, that is the error associated with the ith point. So, since we are talking about model over here, then there is uh, this e term should not be here. It is just a naught plus a 1 x i and the error is this one, right, where y i is nothing but y i measured. So, the measured value minus the model value that will give us the error. So, now we have uh, uh, the individual errors, right, and we want the error to be minimum, right. So, one obvious thing is that we sum this errors, right. So, if we sum this error, what is going to happen is the positive and negative errors are going to get cancel, cancelled out, right. So, uh, we do not, uh, we cannot add the error as such. So, what we will do is we will add the square of the errors, right. So, we will say this is our measure, right. When we say a line is a best fit, it is going to be with respect to this measure that we want the error, the square of error this is the square of the error associated with each point, right. This across all the points, summed across all the points. So, this is what is called as sum of square of errors, right, or sum of square of residuals, right, because error is also known as residuals, right. So, this is going to be indicated by SR, right. So, this we want to minimize, right. We want to minimize SR and SR is nothing but sum of square of all the errors, right. So, if we substitute the expression for, uh, if we substitute the expression uh, measured minus model uh, for error, we will have this expression, right. And then uh, to make it compact, if we get rid of this measured, so this is actually measured, but we are not writing it to keep it uh, compact, right. So, y i minus, uh, it is y i minus a naught plus a 1 x i, right. So, that is why you have uh, the 2 minus over here. When you expand this, you will get that. Right. So, this is what we have. So, this is what we have. Now, going back to the basics which we have studied. So, if you have a function f of x, right, we know that the minima uh, uh, will occur at the stationary point, right. So, the stationary point can be determined by equating the gradient to be 0, right. So, once we get the stationary point, we will have to evaluate the second, uh, second derivative and see if it is greater than 0 or less than 0 and then we will call it, we will uh, uh, we'll establish whether the stationary point corresponds to a minima or a maxima, right. So, that is for a uh, single variable problem. For a multivariable problem, we will have to equate the Jacobian to be 0, right, as we discussed in the previous session. So, if we have two variables x1 and x2, then do f by do x1 and do f by do x2 has to be equated to 0. So, the Jacobian has to be equated to 0 that will give us the stationary point, right. In this case, remember the points x1 are known, right. So, what is unknown is a0 and a1. So, when we say we want to determine the stationary points, we need to differentiate sr, right, with respect to a0 and a1. So, that is what we will do now, right. So, we will differentiate sr with respect to each unknown coefficients uh, in the model, right. So, here we have linear model. So, we need to differentiate dou s r by, we need to differentiate s r and find out what is dou s r by dou a naught and we need to find out what is dou s r by dou a 1, right. So, just like we have an expression, if you have an expression, uh, if you want to differentiate phi x minus 3 the whole square, then we do 2 into phi x minus 3 into phi, right. So, our x square differentiation of x square is 2 x dx, right. So, same thing we will use over here. So, initially we will call this as x, right. So, x square. So, what we will have it, um, we will have it as this one 2 times x, right. And then we need to differentiate y i with respect to a naught. So, that is 0. We need to differentiate this a naught with respect to a naught. So, that will give us minus 1. So, that is why we have this minus sign over here. And then when we differentiate a 1 x i, with respect to a naught, again we will get 0, right. So, this is the differentiation of this expression s r with respect to a naught. That has to be equated to 0. So, here if we expand this equation, 
right. So, this 2 can uh, be removed because uh, the right hand side is 0, right. So, if we expand this equation, we have minus sigma y i plus sigma a naught plus sigma a 1 x i because remember we have a minus sign over here. So, minus into minus that is why this is plus this minus into this minus we have a plus over here right. So, equal to 0. So, now if we see for when we are working with this problem x and y are given to us right. So, since y is given to us we can actually calculate what is sigma y right. So, all this sigma uh, we have removed this index just to keep it compact, but all the sigma are going from 1 to n. Right. So, sigma y i can be determined. So, that is why this term is being taken to the right hand side over here and the sigma a naught is nothing but n times uh, uh, a naught. Right. So, this a uh, out of this a i x i we can take this a a 1 outside. Right. So, this is the expression we will have after differentiating s r with respect to a naught. Right. So, now if we see in this in this case n is known, n is the number of data points right a naught is not known, a 1 is not known, sigma x i can again be calculated it is nothing but the summation of these values and sigma y i can be calculated. So, there are two unknowns in this right a naught and a 1. Similarly, if we differentiate over here right. So, 2 times uh, the entire expression and if we differentiate y i with respect to a 1 we will get 0, a naught with respect to a 1 will get 0. When we differentiate this term a 1 into x i with respect to a i uh, with respect to a 1 we will get x i right. So, that is why this s i uh, appears over here and now if we expand this then this x i will be uh, associated with each term. Again over here if we see x i is known y i is known. So, this point is known this point is known. So, we can calculate x y right. So, this is multiplication of these two. So, all these terms are known. So, this is going to be completely known. So, we will take it to the right hand side and the negative sign would disappear. So, we will have sigma x i y i. Similarly, over here if we see a naught is a constant which we do not uh, a naught is the model coefficient which we do not know. So, a naught x i plus a 1 x i square. So, we know x we will calculate x square for we will square each point and then sum it up. So, this term is also known this is also known right. So, now if we see this is also an expression which involves the unknowns are a naught and a 1 and both of these equations are linear. So, here we had a, a non-linear optimization problem right. So, over here if we see uh, we have this square term we had a non-linear optimization problem we applied the stationary condition and the stationary condition in this case happens to be two unknowns in two equation and both the equations are linear right. So, it has a unique solution. So, we will get only one stationary point. So, now we have this, this we can arrange it in. So, now we can put these two equation in the standard format right. So, the two equations can be put in standard format n a naught plus a 1 sigma x i equal to sigma y i. The second equation is a naught sigma x i plus a 1 sigma x i square is equal to sigma x i y i right. So, these are two equations in two unknowns. This can be put in the conventional form right. So, wherein we say the unknowns are a naught a 1. So, we write it as a vector and if this is a vector the constants related to these two equations are n plus sigma x i. So, if I expand this first equation if I expand this it will be n into a naught plus sigma x into a 1 is equal to sigma y i which is nothing but our first equation. The second equation is a naught into sigma x i plus a 1 into sigma x i square is equal to sigma x i y i. So, that is our second equation. So, this is nothing but in the conventional form this is the coefficient matrix, this is the ve x vector and this is the right hand side um, values of the linear expression right. So, this can be completely calculated, this can be completely calculated uh, given the data points right. So, uh, by solving this two equations into two unknowns we can get the values of a and b or this can be rearranged right. So, for example, I can expand this right. So, the right hand side uh, for example, I can write uh, I can expand this and I can get this expression right. So, if you are interested you can either use this or you can use this one. So, these are known as normal equations. So, these two equations are known as uh, normal equations. So, now uh, we know how to solve 
or linear regression problem. So, let us take a problem. So, here we have 9 data points, these are the x values and the y values, right. So, now let us look at an example, right. So, here we have uh, 9 data points, so this is just serial number, so 1 to 9, these are the x values and the y values. So, now our uh, task is to come up with this a0 and a1 to determine this value of a0 and a1 such that uh, sum of square of errors, right, for uh, of all the points, sum of square of errors is minimum, right. So, there is no other value of a0 and a1 for which the sum of square will be minimum, right. So, this we have seen this problem is nothing but solving a set of simultaneous linear equations involving two unknowns a0 and a1. So, this is what we have derived from uh, in the previous slide, right. So, n is the number of data points. So, in this case n happens to be 9, sigma xi is nothing but the summation of all these values, right. In this case it happens to be 85, right. And then we require sigma yi. So, sigma yi is the summation of this y values. Uh, and then we will require x i square. So, remember very often students make this mistake that it is not square of 85, it is not 85 square, it is just that each value has to be squared. So, 1 square, 1 square, 3 square, 5 square and so on, right. So, this uh, each uh, element has to be squared and then its, summish, uh, its sum has to be taken, right. So, it is 1077 and not 85 square, right. So, that is, uh, that would be required over there. Similarly, x i y i, it is not 85 into 62, right. It is every element of x has to be uh, multiplied with every element of y, right. So, for example, 1 into 4, 3 into 5, 6 into 5 into 6, 7 into 5, 10 into 8, 12 into 7, right. So, this is uh, x i, uh, x y and the summation is 686, right. So, we can plug, if you plug all those values. So, now we have two equations in two unknowns. So, you know how to solve these two equations in two unknowns, right. So, if we calculate the value of a0 is 3.43 and 0.37, right. So, the model which we have is y is equal to 3.43 plus 0.37 x, right. So, the advantage of having this model in this form is now, for example, if you ask me what is the value of 8 at x is equal to 8, at which we do not have the value of y available. So, this model can be used. So, if we plug in the value of x as 8, we can estimate, we can predict what would be the value of y, right. So, that is one benefit of having this model. And suppose, let us say you have this data and you want to find out uh, how does y vary with respect to x, uh, dy by dx or d square y by dx square. So, uh, now we have this model in compact form. Uh, now we have this, now since we have this model in the regular form, we can actually calculate what is dy by dx and d square y by dx square, right. So, this is how we fit a simple uh, uh, straight line to a given set of data points. So, now we, uh, so now the question is how well this model has captured our uh, data points, right. Uh, so, we have this model, one way is to plot it and see, right. So, the question is can it be quantified as to how good it is, right. So, for that we have something called as coefficient of determination or commonly or commonly known as r square, right. So, r, r square can be set to quantify the goodness of a fit, right. So, to calculate r, r square we require uh, what is known as the total error, right, st denoted by st. So, st is given by instead of model, so let, let us say we were trying to fit this model y is equal to ax plus b. Instead of this, uh, let me write just ym, right. Instead of this, if we say that my model is not ax plus b, but merely the mean of the y values, the average of the dependent uh, variables value, right. So, in that case, what would be the error associated with each point is yi minus yi minus y bar, right. So, this is not yi bar because there is only one mean for a given vector. So, y i minus y bar the whole square uh, just so that you do not want to cancel out the positive and negative errors and the summation across all the data points. So, this is called as st. So, instead of regression, right, instead of regression if we were to assume the model is nothing but the uh, mean value of y, what would be the 
total error. So, that is indicated by ST right and then we know this SR right in this case YI minus uh, YI model right. So, model is AXI plus B right this is what we minimized right. So, once we have this A and B we can actually calculate what is SR right. So, R square is given by ST minus SR by ST right. So, ST minus SR uh, quantifies the improvement of error uh, due to describing data in terms of a straight line rather than as an average value right. So, this is uh, the error that we get if we assume the model to be uh, Y bar and this is the error which we got uh, which we get after uh, fitting a straight line right. So, ST minus SR quantifies the improvement of improvement or error right. So, ST minus SR divided by ST this coefficient of determination R square can be calculated right. So, so R square is ST minus SR by ST let us say SR is 0 right. So, if we say SR is 0 what does that mean? right. So, if SR is 0, ST minus 0 by ST, so R square is equal to 1. So, that is the case which we are discussing. So, that is called as perfect fit, wherein the line the passes through all the data points, right, because there is no, uh, the model passes through all the data points, right. So, there is no error associated with any of the data points, only then SR would be 0, right. So, ST minus uh, 0 by ST is equal to 1 right and if uh, SR happens to be equal to ST right in that case R square will be uh, equal to 0 right. So, that means that the entire effort to fit a straight line was useless we could have just taken mean of the dependent variable. So, we could have just taken the mean of the dependent variable. A common misconception is that if R square is close to 1. Uh, it is a very good fit right that may or may not be the case right with R square equal to 1 it is definitely a very good fit because the line will pass through all the data points right. So, we will see a uh, data data set uh, to understand this right. So, this is called as Anuscombe's uh, data set right it has 4 data set data set 1, data set 2, data set 3 and data set 4 right. So, now let us say we have this let us let us for a minute let us forget all the three other data set let us just focus on data set 1. So, we have the x values we have the y values right. So, we can actually do a regression a linear regression right. So, we can uh, uh, we can find out that n sigma x sigma x sigma x square uh, a naught a 1 and sigma y sigma y sigma x y right for these the first data set and we can calculate A naught and A 1. So, you can try it if you calculate A naught and A 1 it will be 3 plus 0 0.5 right. So, that is the line for this and once we have this we can also calculate the R square value right. So, R square value for this would turn out to be 0 0.67 right and the mean of Y is uh, 7.5 and the mean of X is 9. Right. So, let us say we have done regression for this the first data set right. So, similarly we can do the regression for the second data set, the third data set and the fourth data set. So, for all these four data set you will see that the model is same, the mean of x and y is same and the coefficient of determination is same right. So, what you expect is that if I were to plot this let us say if I were to plot x y and the model right the straight line. Uh, because the R square is equal to 0 0.6 what you might expect is that it fits uh, more or less equally in all the four cases right. But right? but if you see over here right uh, here the fit is kind of you can say it is good right. In this case definitely a straight line is not uh, something that is capturing it well look at this case because of this just one point uh, instead of getting a vertical line we have got this uh, line with a slope right and here also the fit is not really good right. So, but in all the four cases the regression coefficient is 0 0.67 right. So, when we are interpreting R square we need to be extremely careful right. It is always suggested that we actually plot the data and the model 
and have a look at it rather than just relying on r square. So, let us look into how to exactly calculate the r square right. So, this is the same data set for which we had fit the model right. So, this were the x this was the da uh, data set x and y and since we have already the model we could have we can calculate what is the value predicted by the model right. So, uh, now we have this right. So, st is to calculate st we require the mean of the dependent variable right. So, the mean happens to be 6.89. Right. And then we can calculate y minus y mean the whole square. So, y minus y mean the whole square this 8.35 is nothing but um, 4 minus 6.89 the whole square, 5 minus 6.89 the whole square, 6 minus 6.89 the whole square. So, this is y minus y mean the whole square right. Those are the summation of this is nothing but our st value which in this case turns out to be 48.87. We also have the model now right. So, 4 minus 3.8 the whole square. So, this is 4 minus 3.8 the whole square. So, that turns out to be 0 0.04. So, 5 minus 4.5, 5 minus 4.5 the whole square. So, that will be 0 0.21. So, similarly we can calculate the difference between uh, the error between the observed value or the measured value y and what is predicted by the model. So, model we have previously determined. So, the coefficients were something 3.43 uh, and 0.37 right. So, this was a naught and this was a a 1 and the model was y is equal to a naught plus a 1 x right. So, this is the s r values. Now, if we plug in these values into this expression of r square s t minus s r by s t, uh, we can determine uh, the r square value right. So, r square happens to be 0 0.75 and the data points we can directly plot right. You can just do in MATLAB plot of x comma y you will get the data points. Since the data points are already available you can plot the data points right and this is since you know the model y is equal to a naught plus a 1 x and we have already found out what is the value of a naught and a 1. So, this line can be drawn right. So, this is what is uh, we have obtained by uh, re regression and these are the data points right. So, here if we can see even though r square is 0 0.75 there is significant error associated with many of the data points. So, that concludes simple linear regression right. So, basically you need to uh, in simple linear regression what we do is we define what is best fit right. So, in this case we said the best fit is uh, the values of the coefficient a naught and a 1 of the straight line a naught plus a 1 x for which the sum of square of error is minimum right. And to find out that a naught and a 1 we applied the stationary condition. Once we have a naught and a 1 we can quantify the fitness using the coefficient of determination right that is r square. So, now we know how to determine the model coefficients how to calculate the r square value. And remember the Anuscombe's data set that uh, it is not usually safe to merely rely on uh, the r square value at least in the case of linear regression uh, we can plot and see how well the model actually fits the data points. So, this is a classical application of optimization. Mm -hmm.